Hey guys, welcome back. So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at what's in my everyday carry for 2024. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure to subscribe and let's take a look. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at is the bag. So I think that like many other photographers or people into tech, we go through bags like crazy. If you would go in my basement right now, I think I have like 50 bags and boxes and stuff. And uh, I don't think there's such a thing as a perfect bag. We're always looking for something else. Kind of being in this space, we're always looking for something better with cameras, bags, anything tech. So the first item is this Tom Tuck sling bag. So like I mentioned, I went through a lot of bags. I had a few Peak Design bags and they felt kind of big, but they had more uh, protection. Uh, this is very soft, doesn't have much protection, uh, but I like how minimalistic it is. It doesn't scream that it's a tech bag or anything like that. So I think you kind of stay under the radar. Uh, you just have this little Tom Tuck logo right here. And Tom Tuck obviously makes bags, uh, not only tech bags, they make you know, different types of bags. They're not specifically for photographers. So I like how uh, on the down low it is. And I like the whole black minimalistic look, uh, just small accents. So the main thing about it, obviously, the main pocket is divided into two. And then you have these little pouches here. You could put memory cards, batteries, or anything like that. You have a pouch in the front over here. And then you have a pouch on a bag. So you can put your wallet or something here. Um, your keys go in the front pocket. You have this little keychain thing for it. And your main tech items, uh, batteries, stuff like that, will go in the main pocket. So I highly recommend this bag. It's very affordable. I'm gonna link all these products down below. So if you're interested in checking something out, uh, click the links below. But yeah. Uh, awesome bag, very small, uh, and you can just kind of carry it with you every day and nobody kind of looks twice at you with this bag. So the next item we're going to take a look at, uh, it's not really something you, that goes in a bag, but I wear it every day. So this is why I sell cologne. Uh, I mean, this cologne is very good. I've been using it for a few years. Uh, very neutral, smelling, great for the day. So highly recommend it. Obviously, we got to smell good. So highly recommend this why I sell cologne. So the next item we're gonna take a look at is my wallet. So I don't like big wallets. I used to have big wallets that look like accordions, you know, Seinfeld style. So I kind of have something more minimalistic now. A lot of us don't carry cash no more. Um, so that's why I like this wallet. So uh, this is a Louis Vuitton uh, card case. It's a double card case. Uh, so you have two cards that can fit right here and two cards that can fit right here. And then you can put some cash in the middle. So I usually just have, you know, $20 or something uh, in a cash pocket in case I go somewhere that, uh, you know, their card reader or something is broken. And then I have a couple credit cards, um, driver's license, stuff like that. So very simplistic, uh, nothing big. And I like how small it is. Uh, but one cool thing uh, that I have in this wallet, I lose everything. I'm terrible at losing stuff. So... I have this Eufy security card. So it's a little thicker than a credit card. But it fits it fits into the wallet and it connects to the Find Me network for Apple. So you can just kind of use your iPhone and find your wallet. Um, so really cool. So if you lose things, I highly recommend this uh, Eufy security uh, card. And as we know, uh, Apple Find Me kind of opened up their network to other devices, and that's why this is part of the Find Me network, but it's not made by Apple. So I highly recommend it. Check it out. So the next item, obviously, we all got to have headphones. We're not always carrying, you know, uh, XM4s, XM5s with us, AirPods Max. We have, we want small headphones that kind of just fit in our bag. So uh, this is the AirPods Pro, first generation. Uh, I didn't feel the need to get the new generation. I think this one's good. Uh, I made a video on this case. Uh, this is a Spigen case. Uh, it has that see-through look. Uh, they have the same case for iPhones, AirPods Max. I think it's just a very cool look. 
makes your AirPods look different, uh, kind of differentiate from everybody else. So highly recommend it. And obviously we're all familiar with AirPods Max. You can just, uh, AirPods Pro, sorry about that. Uh, just toss it in your bag. Um, and then if you need to take a call, listen to some quick music or something, these are perfect. So next thing we're gonna take a look at is the watch. So I'm usually wearing the um, Apple Watch Ultra. Everyone's familiar with this. Uh, I get all my notifications. Uh, I work at a company that I just can't kind of look at my phone the whole time. So I think this is a perfect way to stay on top of your notifications. Uh, but I also stay on top of uh, you know Slack notifications and stuff like that. So it keeps me organized and it's great for work. And so you're not the whole time on your phone. Uh, this is kind of less rude way to kind of check your notifications and make sure you stay up to date on everything or your calendar invites, meetings, whatever you got to do. But if I'm not wearing a digital watch like a Apple Watch, I like to uh, wear a normal watch. Nothing special. I've been wearing this one lately. It's a Timex. I love the orange band. It stands out. It looks great. So I highly recommend having a normal watch uh, besides your uh, Apple Watch, Android Watch, whatever you're wearing. So the second and last item we're going to take a look at is the GoPro. So honestly, it doesn't matter which GoPro you get. Anything newer uh, than I think the 10 has image stabilization, which is a big thing. So I have the media mod on this one. So I like wearing this around my neck if I'm out photographing around the city or something. And so you probably guys seen some of my POV videos with this uh, GoPro. Obviously, everyone familiar with GoPros. I like the media mod uh, because of the better audio. You can connect a microphone to this too. So you don't have to use the GoPro audio. You can have a lav mic plugged in. Uh, it's just obviously good audio is very important and with the media mod It's very easy to have better audio with a GoPro. So I highly recommend it. I have it on this magnetic strap So this goes under my shirt and Then this just magnetizes and I can have this GoPro on my chest. So very cool very on a down low inconspicuous Highly recommend this media mod GoPro and this mount. So yeah, I'll include an Amazon link for it also. So the last thing we're gonna take a look at is obviously the most important for a lot of people, anyone watching this video, is the cameras. So my everyday carry camera is the X100V. So I know the new X100V or the X106 just came out. And it has a few features that obviously matter to a lot of people, uh, more megapixels, and image stabilization. The lens is still the same. Uh, you still have the recipes. You have a couple new recipes in uh, the new X106. So if you have the X100V, I recommend just keeping it. I guess it depends what you bought the X100V for. So I already have a bunch of Sony cameras. I have the A7 IV, I have an A7 III, I have the ZV-E1, I have a bunch of cameras. So I wanted something more on a vintage side that doesn't have the fastest autofocus, it doesn't take the clearest, best, sharpest pictures. You know, if I want something super detailed, something super tack sharp, I'm gonna use, you know, my A7 IV or any of the other cameras I mentioned. So the X100V for me is more of a vintage type of feel. Um, I don't need image stabilization. I don't take many videos with this and I have taken videos with it and it's not bad. I know a lot of people talk about the bad quality video in this, it's not that bad. Just stabilize it in post and you're gonna get good video. Obviously, if you have image stabilization, that's awesome, but I don't know who's buying the X106 for video, X100V. Um, a lot of people buy this camera as a second camera. They already have you know, a Nikon, a Canon, a Sony. So it's a secondary camera, so you don't need all the bells and whistles and have the best footage. So I like bringing this to concerts. I usually get in with it, no problem. I only had one time where they wouldn't let me in because they said it was too big. So also you guys are probably questioning why I have a Sony lens cap on here. So I have a Moment Cinebloon uh, diffusing filter on here. Uh, it's 10%. So after putting uh, this filter adapter on here and the filter, uh, the normal lens cap kind of falls off. So I got this Sony cap from one of my Sony lenses 
and it fits perfect and uh, I don't have to have the stock lens cap that it comes with it and it fall off and everything. So obviously highly recommend this camera. If you already have the X100V, I don't think you should upgrade. Uh, if you don't have the X100V and you can get the X106, go for it. I used to have the X100F, even that takes amazing photos. Uh, the only thing it was la lacking was shooting wide open at F2. Uh, the photos were very soft. I know we like a soft look from this camera and these cameras, but at F2, it was just way too soft. So if you step it up a little bit, that's not bad. But if you want to shoot at F2, get the X100V. You don't need the X106. So another thing that I carry in this bag is the teleconverter for the X100 cameras. Uh, so this is called uh, the, TL, uh, the TCL X102. So I made a video on this before, X102 and X101 uh, for the teleconverter. Uh, if you get the first version, uh, the camera doesn't automatically recognize uh, that you screwed this onto the front of the camera. So you will have to go into the menu and tell it that you have a teleconverter installed. Uh, with the X102, uh, the camera automatically knows uh, you have this screwed on, so it's just less steps. So if you can get a good deal on the first version of this teleconverter, get it. Uh, but if it's similar price, uh, this is just ease of use a lot better. So highly recommend it. Um, you can take great portraits uh, with this teleconverter screwed on. Uh, it just adds more life to this camera. Obviously being a fixed focal length camera, uh, whatever you can do, teleconverter on here. Uh, takes awesome photos. I highly recommend it. I always have it in my bag with the X100V. So the last camera we're going to take a look at. Is an honorable mention. I don't always carry it, but if I don't carry the X100V, I should carry this. So there's a film camera. It's the Canon Sure Shot Supreme. So it's a fully automatic point and shoot. It's uh, kind of a premium point and shoot from back in the day. I like the way the lens kind of reveals itself by pressing this button, super cool takes amazing photos. I'm going to include some photos I took with this camera and let me know what you think. Uh, you can get these for very cheap on eBay, untested or tested. You got to pay a little bit more, but highly recommend picking this up as a point and shoot film camera. And yeah, takes great photos. Uh, highly recommended. Uh, never failed me so far. So yeah, thanks for watching this video. Like I mentioned, if you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe so I can keep on creating content for you guys. If you have any questions about any of this EDC gear, I include it. Let me know. Uh, shoot me a comment. Uh, let's start a conversation. Thanks a lot, guys. See ya.